Right, good afternoon everybody and welcome to this uh, Q&A session this afternoon for the Hawke Conservancy Trust. My name is Campbell, I'm the Head of Conservation and Research at the Trust and I'll be taking you through this session. I don't know how long it's going to last but we've got a question and answer and I'll answer questions as they come in and we can uh, try and answer some of people's queries about vultures. But before I start a little bit about me, like I said my name is Campbell, I've been working on vultures for quite a long time, about 20 years. I started working originally on white-backed vultures and then spent a lot of time looking at white-headed vultures and in between have covered some other species as well, uh, mainly African vultures but also South Asia and I've got a great interest in the New World vultures to the, the condors and the vultures from North and South America. So I wouldn't call myself the fountain of all knowledge on vultures, there's people who know more about vultures than I do. I know quite a lot about vultures because I spend quite a lot of my time thinking about them, researching them, studying them, watching them in the wild, writing about them, these types of things. So that's probably why I'm, I'm here answering or trying to answer your questions about, about vultures. So I've not done one of these before, so I think I'll just wait and see what, what comes in. And uh, I expect we'll probably be about 15 or 20 minutes trying to answer some of these questions. So um, we're going to start off with a question from James, James Dempsey, who's one of our younger viewers, and he's put in a whole long list of, of questions here, and I'm going to start probably with those as they come up because it gives us a good platform probably. So what sort of things do vultures eat? Well, vultures mainly eat dead things, James. Uh, some vultures, like white-headed vultures, they catch their own food very occasionally, but uh, most of the time they're eating dead things. Um, some vultures... Um, only eat dead things, but like I said, white-headed vultures sometimes catch their own. And there's some vague evidence that maybe some other vultures, uh, black vultures in America sometimes have been recorded en masse catching uh, smaller an animals and eating them quickly. But yeah, generally speaking, they eat dead things. And so why do they eat dead food, James wants to know. Well, I've always just thought because it doesn't run away and it's quite easy to catch. Um, but also there's lots of it. And... We shouldn't be surprised when animals eat dead things. Lots of animals, not just vultures or birds, but lots of animals, full stop, eat dead things. Uh, carrion, really, we should say, strictly speaking, because even predators eat their food when it's dead. So um, there's a lot of carrion lying around, and there's a lot of animals that make use of that. So sometimes they're predators that also scavenge, but sometimes scavengers also catch things for themselves, catch live food. James also wants to know where vultures live. Well, they live lots of places, uh, except for Australia. They don't live in Antarctica either. And as you may know, we don't have any birds in Britain. And that's one of James's other questions, is why aren't there any vultures in England? Um, occasionally, they do wander across from Europe. They probably get blown across, usually young birds. There was a bearded vulture that came across from Europe, I think it was last year sometime. Um, but yeah... The vultures in Europe tend to nest often in, in quite hilly uh, mountainous landscapes. We don't really have the same sort of mountains here in England that there are in Europe, like the Alps or the Pyrenees, that type of thing. So it could be a habitat question. I'd be very surprised if historically, i.e. before the English Channel opened, that there weren't vultures here uh, periodically, but certainly not any now. And how do they find their food? James got a long list of questions here, and these are all classic vulture questions, so I quite like these ones. They find their food two main ways, mainly by looking, which I know sounds really obvious, but they're either looking for themselves or they're looking to see what other vultures are doing. So a species like a white-backed vulture, for example, which is quite numerous in Africa and was numerous in South Asia, and griffins do the same thing. They're looking for food on the ground, but they're also watching to see what other vultures are doing. So if they see from the way a vulture changes the way it flies, that that bird may have found a carcass, then they'll wander across to follow what that other vulture is doing. So they use a network of information, but they also look on their own. And then some species, which tend to be solitary, they often, like white-headed vultures, they'll just find food for themselves. And uh, other species, like lappet-faced vultures, they often come to a carcass a long time after the other vultures have finished feeding. So they're not always there first. In fact, they often turn up last, species like lappet-faced vultures. 
how do they fly because they're so big okay so the whole question about bird flight is another another topic altogether but the wonderful shape of a bird's wing is how they do it but um vultures fly mainly when they cover big distances they're following it by gliding and um they do flap, use flapping flight, but most of the very big species, so things like condors or some of the very big griffins, they nest often on cliffs and high places because in order to take off easily, it's easier to get a, a flying start, so to speak. So they perch and nest and roost up on cliffs so that when it's time to go foraging in the morning, they just jump off the cliff and they don't have to, to fly. So it's very difficult for these big vultures, really big vultures, to get airborne, particularly when they've got a lot of food in their crop. Uh, so that's why they tend to roost and nest in high places. Some of the smaller species, white-backed vultures, black vultures, turkey vultures, some of these smaller species, they can take off much more easily. But even those birds, when they've got a full crop of food, it's difficult for them to take off. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, the big birds, and they need a long, if they're taking off from the ground, they often need a long runoff. Uh, before they can get airborne. Hooded vultures tend to just be able to jump straight up off the ground. So do black vultures. Black vultures in America, they're in the Americas, they're very good at, at literally just jumping straight up in the air. So, um, but yeah, the big ones certainly need a long runway. And how do they eat their food? James, you're full of questions about vultures. Um, they eat their food just like we do. They put it in their mouth and they, and they send it down their esophagus. But um, of course, Birds don't have teeth, uh, so different vultures feed in different ways. So they all use their beak a bit like a knife and fork. So the griffins and the whiteback vultures, they tend to pull big chunks of, of feet and swallow it as quickly as they can. Uh, the New World vultures do the same thing, but they have a slightly different shaped beak. So although they're very greedy or seem greedy and they're picking and chewing chunks of food, Lots of vultures have a longer, thinner beak and they tend to be a bit more picky, so they'll pick individual pieces of meat rather than trying to gulp lots of food quickly. And one thing that's really cool, Andean condors in particular, because I've been managed to see one up close, so if you open their beak, their tongue is a bit shaped a bit like a shovel if you look at it from front on, but they have all sorts of uh, serrations, so little spikes that point one way and that's down their throat. So when they're grabbing food, they've almost got like a... I suppose it's a little bit like Velcro, it grabs onto the food and then it can get um, sent down their throat much faster. So it's pretty amazing. Um, and they often use their feet, their talons, to stand on what they're tearing apart and then tear it apart with their beak and swallow it quickly. So that's a lot of questions, James. I hope we've um, managed to get through all those for you. Uh, let's move on and see what else we've got here. So... Um, Wayne, Wayne Eggy, Eggy Eggleston. That's um, I don't know if he's put Eggy or whether that's been uh, put in there. I presume it's uh, from Wayne himself. Can you cross vultures? Um, I suppose that means can species breed? Uh, can they be cross or interspecific breeding? The short answer is yes. Uh, so there's a number of cases of hybrids in the wild. So uh, one of the bigger griffins, the repels. Uh, repels vulture which is a usually a cliff nesting bird from Africa east and and west Africa uh, there are records of those birds hybridizing with whiteback vultures and they've nested in trees and I'd imagine that in certain circumstances a lot of the gyps vultures all from that genus could hybridize um, it doesn't happen very much and why it doesn't happen more is an unknown question well we don't know the answer to that question and that question itself gets back to these bigger concepts of what is actually a species and how do species form we have some some biogeographic explanations for how species form um, in evolutionary terms but when different species that are remarkably similar to each other live in close proximity why don't they hybridize at all and lest we get sucked down the wormhole of the, of the species concept argument, which is quite long and protracted, uh, let's just say the short answer is yes, there is hybridising between species of vultures, but they tend to be those that either from the same genus or um, rather than 
cross genera species. So it'd be very unlikely, for example, to find um, a white-backed vulture breeding with a, a lapid-faced vulture, for example. Uh, right, so Maisie, uh, Maisie Cox is asking a question which I've found very interesting over the years is, are there any carcasses vultures won't eat from? And yes, uh, it's anecdotal, but there's there's also some, some recorded evidence too. And it's one I've found always quite intriguing is that vultures often uh, won't eat from lightning struck carcasses. So in some parts of the world where you have these very, very powerful and dramatic thunderstorms, oftentimes when a lightning strike hits the ground, uh, lots of animals will be killed by the lightning strike. And it's been recorded quite a few times now that the vultures will see the, the dead animals and think, hey, great, let's go down for food. And they won't they won't eat the carcasses that have been struck by lightning. And this has been recorded quite a few times. So that's one type of carcass they won't, they won't eat from. Um, I also read an account once where a giraffe had sadly been electrocuted by touching a, an overhead power line. And the vultures didn't eat that one, that carcass either. So something to do with electricity, not quite sure what. But um, yes, they don't, don't eat those. Um, I'm just going to jump back... Um, Anamika has asked about whether vultures eat dead vultures. I I have to say I've not read any accounts of vultures eating dead vultures. Um, or, excuse me, or seen it myself. Uh, but I'd be surprised if they didn't. I'd be surprised if there wasn't a case where um, a really, really hungry vulture um, wouldn't make use of a carcass that it, that it found there. So... Um, so there you go, Maisie. There's some of those. Uh, so... Anamika has also asked why some vultures have eyelashes and others don't. To the best of my knowledge, they all have eyelashes. Some of them are very, very small though. So some, they're not like all secretary birds, which have the, the killer eyelashes of the bird of prey world. Uh, but some vultures, in particular the, the white-backed vultures, so the Asian and the um, African white bird vultures, they have very, very small eyelashes, and so do the black vultures and, and turkey vultures. Um, if you get really, really close to one, they uh, they have very, very, very small eyelashes, and um, perhaps it looks like they don't have them, but I've not seen my, a bald eyelash vulture yet, but maybe they do exist, but I haven't seen one. And then a question Anamika is asking about um, nail colour in vultures. And this is very interesting. So, uh, Anamika is saying that the some some have black nails and some have have uh, pink nails, and um, this is it just a random thing. It is it is to do with the amount of pigment in the talons. So, also at the Hawk Conservancy Trust, we've had uh, white-headed vultures that have had pale talons, and some uh, gyps vultures they also have black talons and pale talons. So. It is a random thing. It's to do. It's a little bit like uh, any sort of melanin or, or coloration in species. The variation that that is between individuals in a species. So um, I don't know whether it's random, but certainly there is variation between individuals in terms of talon color. And then sticking with white-headed vultures, Anamika is obviously keen on those. As as am I. Thank you. Do they only breed in certain climates? Unlike, for example, white-backed or some of these other vultures, repels, hooded vultures. And Anamika's mentioned that in the Netherlands, where she's based, the most of the vultures have a chick every year, except for the white-headed vultures, which don't. Um, I think there's a combination of things going on here. But the to answer the first part of the question, uh, certain climates, vultures tend to have a very broad climate envelope in which they can breed. Um, so yeah, that, I think that's less the case than the biology, biology of the species. So white-headed vultures in the wild tend to have productivity. They tend to have two chicks every three years, some, somewhere there on average. So it's not a surprise that they don't breed every year. Um, but yeah, same would be expected for some of these other species of vultures that you find in captivity, particularly the big ones. The big ones have the slow reproductive rate so they probably don't breed every year, but they can breed every year. But generally speaking, they in the wild, they, they won't be successful every single year. 
So, right, just trying to look at some other questions here. This is quite a nice format. Actually, I quite like this. Um, Kat, Kat Jones is asking if the hooded vulture research that the trust does is going to be affected by lockdown. Uh, the answer is yes. So the field season that we had um, planned has been disrupted significantly. Um, so what that means is we're going to miss a year's breeding data for those birds. But other aspects of the project will be able to continue once we can get back into the field. Even uh, in our field sites, there's a lot of permissions and licenses required to actually get into the field. So we've postponed that for the time being. And then similarly, Bradley's asked about whether reduced human activity during the pandemic will have an effect on global vulture populations. Uh, sad to say, Bradley, I don't think so. And I presume when you say an effect, you mean a good effect by fewer people cruising around. Unfortunately, the people who tend to cause the biggest problems for vultures are people who are doing illegal things. So in Africa, certainly, uh, where poisoning is the number one killer of vultures, the people who are doing most of the poisoning in southern Africa, at least, is uh, the poachers. So they're not particularly interested in lockdowns. They're not interested in trying to curb pandemics. They're just interested in poaching. And they are the ones who are causing most vultures to be poisoned. So in that respect, no, I don't think so. And in other parts of the world, uh, in the Americas or in parts of Europe, for example, uh, where there have been uh, big lockdowns, I, I can't imagine the effect over such a short period of time. Although it's a drag for a lot of people in the, in the pandemic lockdown and, and having restrictions on people's activities, biologically speaking, it's been a remarkably short period of time. So particularly for big birds and slow reproducing birds like vultures. So I don't think that's going to have um, an impact. And then Mandy with an eye, Bainbridge, who has asked, she said, can you please settle a heated discussion for us about whether vultures can vomit in flight? Um, OK, Mandy, I hope it hasn't got too heated uh, because whilst an interesting question uh, no need to get heated about these types of things. Um, I've never seen a vulture vomit in flight, and if you've ever watched a vulture vomit, it's quite a production. They they do vomit fairly quickly compared to people which t people tend to dry heave for quite some time. Um, I'd put it in terms of the biological reasoning for that. So vultures tend to vomit before they take off, usually as a as a response to a threat. So they uh, the, the general consensus is that they are trying to lighten their body weight so they can escape quickly. There's nonsense about projectile vomit attacking predators that are trying to hurt them and spew all over them. That's, I think that's complete nonsense, but vultures certainly do vomit before they take off. Uh, but once they take off, they're pretty capable flyers and can uh, actually fly very quickly to get away from a threat. And most threats for vultures, let's face it, are on the ground. So a terrestrial predator like a jackal or um, a leopard or something that's going to hurt a vulture. But once they're in the air, they have relatively little to worry about. So uh, biologically speaking, there's no real good reason for a vulture to vomit in flight. And having seen a vulture fly, a uh, vomit rather, when they're shaking their head, it would seem to me very, very difficult for a vulture to be able to vomit in flight. So I've not seen it. I've not seen a vulture try to do it. Um, but that's not to say it can't happen. So sad to say, Mandy, I don't think I've answered that question for you adequately enough to solve the uh, heated discussion. But I always tend to fall back on the biology because that's what I do. So yeah, there's very little reason I can see why vomiting in flight would be an adaptive behaviour for, for vultures. Like I say, once they're in flight, they're pretty safe from their main threats, which are almost all located on the ground, apart from the occasional super aggressive eagle that might um, decide to attack attack a vulture. Having said that, I once saw a white-headed vulture escort a marshal eagle from the premises. So a female white-headed vulture took great exception to a marshal eagle flying near her nest and she she showed that marshal eagle what for. So biggest vulture, um, biggest eagle in Africa was given a seeing to by a white-headed vulture. So that was that was pretty cool, I thought. But I think I've got through most of the uh, questions here. So uh, keep sending them in, though, because we will uh, keep answering them. I'm running out of time here. I've given a, I was given a limit of about, of about 15 to 20 minutes, and we're, we're running up to that now. 
But I would just like to touch back on Kat's question about the hooded research, hooded vulture research. And yes, our activities have been curtailed. Lots of things to do with Hawk Conservancy Trust have been curtailed in the lockdown. And we really appreciate everybody's support, particularly when we don't have visitors coming through. So if you would like to continue to support us, either through our conservation research work or supporting the birds at the park. You can donate, you can support us either through our Facebook page or through the website. And please do, and we do really appreciate your support. And we are hoping very much, of course, to be open again soon when we can welcome everybody back. But in the meantime, we do appreciate you tuning in to these sorts of videos, our website and the other activities that we've been putting out to keep you uh, in touch with us and us in touch with you. So uh, so thank you again. We do appreciate your support. I hope you've enjoyed this Q&A. Uh, I suspect there's going to be another one. I'm not sure what it's about, so we'll have to stay tuned on that. But thank you again and see you soon.